Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs today with a little modification of this uh, Zongdi vacuum desolder station that we use here. I think it's a kind of standard model in the low end range which you can get for quite a low price at eBay, AliExpress, etc. It sells under different brands. Here, for example, it was Editronic, but the ZD915 or one of its successors, ZD probably is the abbreviation for Zongdi, the original manufacturer. Um, now, just a short description. Um, you have this desolder gun. Uh, you have a regulated heater element here, uh, which you can set, I think, up to 450 degrees. And when you pull the trigger switch here, then an internal vacuum pump, we'll take a look inside in a minute, uh, starts to work and it sucks um, through this nose cone here, which has a little hole inside. They are also exchangeable with different diameters for different through-hole components. And um, frequently you have to, well, first of all, the solder finally lands into this kind of chamber here, which you frequently have to clean. And at the end, there's a little air filter as well as behind here, this screw. Uh, which you frequently have to change. And what sometimes also can happen is if the, if the heater element, if the uh, solder tip or desolder tip is uh, still not hot enough, um, some of the solder can solidify again inside. And therefore are these little things, I don't know how to call them, where you can clean the channel, the internal vacuum channel. Um, now this thing has one disadvantage and that is the vacuum pump starts to work only when you pull the trigger switch. This is probably to reduce noise and to reduce wear of the vacuum pump. Now let's take a look inside. <coughs> there is not very much to see. Um, we have here a regulated power supply. Uh, here are two power resistors, probably let's, yeah, behind this plastic enclosure here. Uh, perhaps you can, yeah, let me, yeah, it's difficult to show here on camera. Anyway, these kind of dropper resistors seem to reduce the voltage from the power supply for the heater element for the desolder gun uh, to 12 volts here for this little membrane pump and here in this box there is the the basic membrane pump this is the motor for uh, the pump and you have the, your vacuum hoses and what else is there a little fan that's basically can be left out. It's very loud and should be exchanged for a lower noise one. And here on the front panel, which you can take off. So let me try to show you the electronics, except for the power switch and the connection to the desolder gun. Uh, here are only the three push buttons and this is the main controller. So a standard uh, solder or desolder gun controller. So for the price it's uh, built okay. But the main disadvantage is um, when you start the membrane pump with the trigger switch, then the vacuum does not build up instantly, uh, but it takes, well, I don't know, 100, 200 milliseconds uh, before you have the full vacuum. And that's quite a disadvantage because what you want is here at the at the top of the desolder tip, you just want an instant vacuum and not one that slowly builds up. So what's the remedy for this? Well, I bought one of these vacuuming containers for uh, food vacuuming. It has about one liter of uh, volume 
and uh, you get this uh, lid with a little rubber gasket and it has two holes and on the one hole I bought a 24 volt vacuum valve. I rewired simply uh, how the switch is connected. Now the vacuum pump, the membrane pump is working constantly and it uh, produces a vacuum in this uh, container which is quite good so the, the uh, pump although small uh, produces quite a good vacuum and if I now pull the trigger switch uh, then simply the valve opens and lets the vacuum go with full force here to the desolder gun. So this cost me uh, I don't know 30 euros around like that the, the vacuuming container and the vacuum valve all from eBay and one little piece of wire and three new solar junction and that was all it was 20 minute work and um, if I now switch on this thing you won't hear anything from me anymore because if it's open it's as loud as an airplane starting so and I haven't only got this standard hose, uh, this little connector here. This is not made for vacuum, so this is not optimum, but it was just what I had lying around. I will get a better uh, hose like this true vacuum hose uh, in the next few days. Uh, now let's switch it on and you won't hear uh, me anymore when this thing is running. Um, but after some seconds I will try to pull the lid off here and you will see that uh, the vacuum is quite good. So you see it's really absolutely airtight. So this is now absolutely airtight of course after some seconds it loses its vacuum due to some leakage uh, back into the membrane pump. But anything, I've tried this out uh, and it works a factor of two better now in desoldering because the, the liquid solder is instantly sucked into the desolder tip here. And this is quite important if you desolder, especially through plated uh, holes where the solid junction extends to uh, both sides of your uh, PCB. So you, you need really a hot solder tip. I always set it to 400 degrees Celsius and a, a good vacuum which instantly sucks all the solder if possible from both sides of the PCB. Ah, so th that was for a short mod on this cheap vacuum desolder station and I'm quite happy with it. And if I can do it with my two left hands, then anybody else can do it. Uh, you only need these two parts and I've glued this with, with some uh, hot glue here too. And this little hose here just by chance fit it directly into this hole. And uh, here also some little hot glue and that was all. So it's quite easy to do by yourself. So, uh, thanks for watching. If you liked it, uh, please give it a big thumbs up and you can support me on Patreon and hope to see you next time. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kanka Labs.